Thank you for joining me everyone. I'm Brandon Schaefer and this is another painting lesson. This is a still life that I set up and that I'm going to be uh, painting today. And uh, just to start out with the colors here, luckily I recorded myself uh, mixing up the colors beforehand before painting. So I have titanium white, cadmium yellow light, cadmium red medium, ultramarine blue, some burnt umber, and the pile of purple and the pile of green off to the right those are just um, mixtures that were mixed uh, from other painting sessions after mixing up all the paint uh, on the palette so those are just from the day before uh, and I just use those as grays because they have all the colors on the palette mixed together uh, there's just more of other uh, colors like in the purple there's more red and in the green there's more green in it uh, but I can just use these as grays to kind of harmonize or gray down any color mixture that I wish to. Um, it also saves me some paint. So once I have enough on the palette, I just, uh, once I have enough leftover paint, I just tube it up as a gray in, into a small paint tube. And that way I'm not wasting any paint. I'm not throwing a bunch of paint away. So. I'm using oil paint today, if you couldn't tell already. This is Gamblin oil paint. And I usually do this before my paintings. I'll just take, uh, you know, 10 minutes or so. I think this is going to be about 8 minutes of color mixing. And I just mix the main colors that are involved in the painting. And it's very simple. It's it's just a few colors, six or seven probably, uh, sometimes less, sometimes more. This painting is very simple. It's a lot of warm tones, very orange tones. So I think what I just mixed up there was the background color. It was just burnt umber and uh, a mix of all the other colors basically to get a very dark mixture. This part is really self-explanatory if you just watch it, but I'm just going to explain a little bit here and there. So I'm obviously going for an orange mixture now. So it was red and yellow, and now I'm dipping into the gray. So this automatically will gray it down and it will harmonize with everything else, every other mixture I'm going to make. Because it's going to, this orange, or this kind of browny orange, is going to have something in common with all the other color mixtures. So now I'm just kind of adding a little more saturation back into it uh, by adding some yellow and red. Just slowly tweaking the color, trying to get it to where I want it. I'm kind of making a secondary mixture uh, based off of that mixture, uh, just a lighter version of that, which will kind of be like the highlight for it, the highlight color. Um, the other color is more of the average tone, and this is more of the highlight color. As you can see, I left some red next to it because red is really strong, and if I need to, I can mix in more of that red. Or if while I'm painting, if I need more red, I can just dip into that pile instead of, uh, you know, taking from the, the big red pile. So another warm mixture here, but m definitely more gray than the last orange mixture. This is more of a brown mixture, but it's more of a um, an orangey brown. So I started off with the red and burnt umber and then dipped into some yellow. And um, so it's basically orange with burnt umber. And then I'm adding some white to uh, lighten it up. And there you can see again, I, I touched a little red and now I'm making a secondary mixture based off of that mixture. And this is gonna be more of like a shadow color or just a, a different tinge of that color, more of a red 
uh, red orange tone or hue, whatever you want to call it, color. So when it comes to color mixing, it's it's very simple. Um, I think most beginners and a lot of folks out there just they they overcomplicate it when it's it's a very simple process color mixing um, and, and the mixture I'm creating right now is just the color of the the white sheet that everything is sitting on now I don't want this to be completely just straight white um, it's not straight white so I have to paint it as I'm seeing it and I'm seeing it as kind of a grayish but it's a warm gray so that's what I did I, I I took some of the dark color that I had and some white mixed that together so now it's more of a toned down it's like an off white um, and some of the highlights I'm gonna create will probably be even lighter than that so when it comes to color mixing it's just it, it's it's thinking of the base color that you need. Is it red, orange, yellow, um, blue, green? And then just graying it down from there and tweaking it how you need to, to tweak it. Is there more brown in it? Is there more red to it? Is the, is the value lighter or darker? It's, it's a very simple process, uh, honestly. You just have to think about it very simply. And you're not always going to get it right on the first try. Um, sometimes I mix up these colors and then they're a little off. So while I'm painting, I have to just kind of mix up some more color or change it a little bit. Uh, I'm just getting as close as I can. So there you can see that's all the mixtures I'm going to be using. Very warm, slight shifts between each one. Um, but just very brown, orange, warm, reds, and some white. So now I'm starting off a small brush, it's probably a number four or a number six. I usually use, sometimes with these smaller paintings, this is a six by eight canvas panel. Usually, usually I can use um, one brush for the entire painting um, because it's just kind of like a study. I'm, I'm just trying to capture the, the right colors, the right shadows, um, the right values, everything. And I'm using, to start off with here, it's Burnt Umber, just really thinned down with a Gamsol, Odorless Mineral Spirits. So it's almost like, it, it, it comes across as like a watercolor almost because it's thinned down so much, but it's not dripping or anything. Um, so I'm, I just start out with a sketch, real simple. Just kind of like a line sketch. Sometimes I'll fill in the shadows um, to try to get kind of a separation of light and shadow as kind of like an underpainting. And sometimes my sketches don't always start out the right way. Um, I make things too large or too small and I have to just wipe it down and start over. And with this composition, I wanted to, um, I, I liked the sheet kind of taking up uh, most of the painting. It just kind of pushes everything up and, uh, you know, it, it, I'm kind of creating a focal area. And there you can see I'm wiping this down because I started, I started drawing out things too large and... Uh, they got too close to the top of the, the, the painting there, the canvas, so uh, kind of have to just start over and um, try to get what I'm, what I'm going for. So when I sketch, I try to think about, okay, there's the, the horizon line, the bottom of the top of the sheet, and then I mark the, the most extremes. I, I mark the, the, the tallest height of the, of the objects, and then the outer portion of the farthest 
um, edge left and the farthest edge right and that sets my boundaries and sometimes I mark the, the center of the canvas and compare it to the center of the still life so I just start off with little marks um, that signify you know the edge of, of this object Once again, I, I just try to keep it simple with what I'm doing because um, <laughs> painting is already complicated enough, and um, you know, keeping just thinking about it in the simplest terms that you can. Uh, that, that's what I want to stress because a lot of beginners or just some artists, uh, you know, it doesn't matter how far along you are on your journey. Um, I've been doing this for a few years now, and it's it still can be tough uh, depending on what I'm painting but I just try to break everything down into simple shapes and um, you know thinking about it simply is going to help you a lot because uh, you know there's no need to complicate it it's already a complicated uh, art form so Yeah, like I was saying, most artists can already be kind of scared or afraid or intimidated by certain painting glass or painting shiny objects or copper objects, or just painting anything. So if you try to just simplify it and not be so afraid uh, of messing up, because like I said, I messed up in the first two minutes of painting this. I had to wipe it down and start over. Um, I didn't even have any color on the canvas. It was just a brown sketch. So, uh, you know, you, you don't have to worry about being fearful of, of messing up. Anyway, I'm just mixing up some color here, uh, or getting prepared. So please excuse that. But we're going to start painting here shortly, because I already have all the color mixtures that I need, basically. So I'm looking at <clears throat> my still life and just determining, uh, you know, where I want to start what's the darkest color, what's the lightest color, or value rather, and how to approach everything, but, but still just keeping it simple. <clears throat> and also I try to paint objects in the least amount of strokes, and that's got to, that kind of keeps my, my painting loose, and it, it keeps maintains some of the brush strokes, and just kind of the freshness of uh, of painting from life. So you can see there I painted a highlight and I'm painting the shadow. Uh, so I have three different tones down there and then I kind of just try to blend them together uh, where they need to be, softening some edges. <clears throat> So you can see how I already jumped to the second object. That first object I put about, you know, anywhere from like four to seven strokes, uh, but it's mainly three strokes. Um, and then just a little bit of, you know, variation in there, softening and blending it down. Now I'll jump back to that object a little bit later, but I'm just trying to get colors down. I'm trying to get these tones down so that I can uh, start judging everything a lot better start comparing everything so I kind of get the shadow down I get the highlight down blend it where I need to and then just jump to the next object and get these base colors down so that I have something to uh, to, to base the rest of the painting on So now you can see the object I'm working on now, I, I believe is a, 
Asian pear, and uh, that's a lot grayer than the clementine right next to it. Um, so it's these, these subtle shifts you have to start kind of uh, start seeing in your daily life and your painting life. Start recognizing how gray down everything really is. Um, even that, that bright orange on the clementine to the left, remember that had, I, I mixed every color in that orange. That orange is grayed down. So in the painting it's going to look powerful, but it looks more realistic because it's actually grayed down like it would be uh, in nature and in real life. Um, it's it's more it has more harmony. Uh, I'm not saying you can't you you can just add like you know a bit of saturated orange into that, um, but you know it's just recognizing these grays and how they exist in real life and in nature, and being able to mix them up and and just paint them. <clears throat> you know I kind of think of my paintings so they're basically uh, at least recently. They're just different colored grays. So really, if you just start out every mixture with a gray and then tone it up to what color you want. Is it an orange gray you want? Is it a yellowy brown gray, uh, a red gray, a blue gray? I mean, it's, that, that's really the world we live in. <clears throat> so now I'm putting some kind of the, some of the highlights down. Um, That's going to be the tough object that I'm working on right now is that copper uh, shiny uh, pitcher. So I'm kind of approaching that with a little bit of caution and just trying to uh, start out with something that's correct on the, on the object, which is the highlight. And then now I'm working, starting to put in some shadow areas. So I'm just slowly building that up. Uh, because th this is going to be the tough object to really work on. Adding in some shadows underneath the objects. <clears throat> and just notice how carefully I'm doing everything. Um, I'm not painting wildly. I'm not going really fast. I finished this painting in about an hour, but it, it's not about painting quickly or painting, uh, you know, furiously or anything like that. It's just carefully putting in the right spot so that I don't have to mess with it later. So I'm just looking at my object while I'm painting this. I'm looking, I'm always glancing back at the still life. I'm squinting and um, just carefully putting in these brush strokes, blending out a few things. There's a lot of texture and stuff on, on that object, so it's really tough to see where the shadow ends and where it begins and the average tone of it. So it's it's just a slow build up uh, for painting it. So now I'm, I'm starting to add in kind of the average color. Um, or at least some reflected lights in the shadows. So I started out with like the highlights and, and the shadows, which is the brightest and the darkest color of the object. And now I'm kind of moving towards the, the middle color, the average color. Um, but this object is made up of a lot of different colors. There's reds in it, there's whites in it, there's golds and yellows in it, and um, just a lot of reflections going on, a lot of things going on. So uh, just painting as carefully as I can, but also not worrying too much about getting it perfect. I'm, I'm just doing the best I can.
So the colors I'm painting in right now, they're kind of reflections from the fruit surrounding it. And I, I just keep working it, you know. Um, if I see something that's that's kind of wrong, I just go back and try to touch it up. Now I'm adding in some more of the, the redder tones into it, more of the coppery color tones. And this painting is only so big, or should I say small, so I mean I can only add so much detail that my brushes will allow me. And I don't really enjoy painting uh, with a very fine small brush. I mean sometimes I have to to get uh, the highlights and things that I need, but for the most part I, I like keeping it keeping the brush strokes there and um, you know I've been using the same brush this whole time. So now I'm, I'm working on the background and this is going to help me to start judging the colors of the objects a little bit better and it's going to start helping me to outline the objects, um, you know, determining the border of the objects. So once I have the objects pretty much filled in, I'm going back to the background and uh, kind of trimming up the objects where they need to be and uh, just kind of cutting them out with the background. as you can see right there. So with the background I'm kind of thinking like I'm thinking about the negative space involved instead of the positive space. I'm kind of uh, I'm shaping the objects now. That's why it can be difficult um, painting in layers. I, I When I painted with acrylics, when I first started, I painted in layers, and if, if you mess up a layer, if I messed up, if I painted this background first, and then um, I painted the objects on top of the background, but then I messed up an object and I had to start repainting the background, it, it wouldn't really look, um, you know, that one part of the background it wouldn't really fit in with the rest of the background. So I try not to think in terms of layers anymore. <clears throat> I try to think in terms of, you know, just positive and negative shapes and space. Because at any time I can come back in with this background and, and cut into an object. and Or I can cut into the background uh, while painting part of the object again. So I'm always just pushing these edges around and pushing these lines around. I don't really think in terms of, of layers too much. So there you can see I'm kind of sculpting the, the small picture there with the background. And a technique like that comes in handy when if you have a small line, a dark line within an object, Instead of using a small brush to paint in that dark line, sometimes what you can do is paint the dark area first with a larger brush and then paint the light over that dark, leaving just a small line of dark. I hope that makes sense. Um, you know, there's just different techniques of, of how to handle um, darks and lights and, and uh, shapes and, and negative space. There's, there's a lot of different ways to handle things. So I'm just taking my time here to get, get some good paint coverage on the background. But if you think about it, if you're looking at, at this, the painting is basically about halfway done. Um, the objects are still need a little bit of work. 
mostly the picture needs a lot of work, but the base colors are there. The idea is there. Um, all I need to do is is put now. All I need to do is add the white sheet beneath it, and uh, I'm really close to being finished with the painting. Um, for the most part, it's just moving some edges around, um, adding some highlights, some shadow areas, and a little bit of details just to bring it to life, push it to the next level, and it's it's basically done. So kind of when you're when you're starting a painting, it's just breaking that down um, in simple terms. That's what I kind of mean. So you break the objects down into simple basic color shapes, color notes, and then you have the background and you have the foreground or, um, you know, in this case I have the background which is the dark sheet and then the, the foreground which is the light sheet or basically what the objects are sitting on and then I have the object. So it's, it's very simple composition but it's a powerful painting. showing these slight differences in these warm colors and uh, it's just a study of these warm tones uh, I really enjoyed painting this one so now for the foreground I'm starting out with the gray kind of a middle gray and this is just some of the shadow areas on the sheet. And what I like to do with, with the white sheet um, and kind of lights like this, I start out with the darker areas and I kind of slowly build up to the brightest lights at the very end. And uh, it just helps me judge the whole painting better and And it, it helps me uh, not get false accents. And what I mean by false accents are um, getting something too bright when it doesn't need to be that bright or too dark. And uh, just starting out with a gray like this just helps you judge that better. So now is the fun part is just leaving, trying to uh, stay loose with it. But I'm, I'm painting in all these different creases and stuff. Uh, from this unironed sheet and it's a lot of fun and it, it just adds kind of an abstract feeling to this painting a bit um, you know the objects are so carefully painted and then I get with the sheet I get to just layer paint on here and leave brush strokes in there and just have a lot of fun with it um, I probably over painted it a little bit um, but in the end it, it comes out okay but uh, there's just a lot of great strokes in there that I ended up painting over, but uh, you know that's what painting's all about. It's just finding that balance and where to where to stop, how to know when to stop, and when to quit fussing with it and, and messing with it. That's that's one of the big challenges with painting. So like I said a few minutes ago, I just fill in this white sheet, or really it's gray, it's an off-white, and uh, the painting is basically done. I mean, other than the details of the objects and kind of touching them, touching them up again and uh, fixing some edges. I hope you find this video helpful so far and just seeing how I paint in real time. None of this is sped up, none of it's slowed down. This is me actually painting. So now I'm just I'm just trying to create strokes in all different ways and but I'm also what I'm also doing is creating sort of diagonal strokes going upward and uh, just slight slight diagonal and um, what diagonals do with your paintings is they create a lot of movement 
um, I mean, if you think of perspective, like if you're looking down a road or down a railroad or something, uh, there's diagonal lines going to a, a vanishing point, and that creates a lot of movement. And um, that's not present in this painting, but the the sheet there, a lot of the creases, I can I can create creases where I want and kind of direct a, a, a line pointing up toward an object. Um, and maybe you, you'll see that a little later on when I, I mess with the, the sheet a little bit more. And it, it allows me to create a um, movement up toward the objects. So now a little bit darker as it's going back behind the objects and back into the shadows. So the sheet you can see just got a little bit darker. And I'm going to blend that edge out and that's going to create a little bit of depth as well. It's kind of pushing that edge farther back. And that's the real difficult part with this painting is getting that edge all the same all the way across. And you can see I messed up some of that object, but I'm just going to paint the object back in. And that's what I meant earlier when I'm just fighting back and forth with the edges, just playing it back and forth where I need to. So now I just add more color there and the orange is back in business. I'm bringing it back into the foreground. So now I'm probably just cleaning my brush, mixing up some other color, um, you know, looking at things, seeing what I'm going to do, how I'm going to fix it, how I'm going to, what's the next stroke I'm going to paint, um, just kind of evaluating everything. And even though I mixed up all those, the colors in the beginning, there are, you know, as you're painting, you'll see slight variations in that you'll have to just mix up color uh, from those big piles. So that, that's really what the big piles of paint for are for. And, and as you go along, you're just going to have to create little variations as you go. So now I'm adding on a brighter highlight for the sheet. And this really brings the painting to life. Uh, um, for most paintings and I'm trying to just put thicker paint on here but I'm also sculpting that shadow under the Asian pear and uh, you know creating varying my pressure with the brush uh, sometimes I'm barely even touching the paint I'm moving the paint around without even touching the canvas I'm just touching the paint uh, so now I'm kind of just blending that edge down softly, creating some highlights down at the bottom. Because there's a bunch of different creases and things in the sheet, so there's going to be areas where light is hitting this sheet uh, down at the bottom there. So I'm just carefully trying to design it a little bit.
cutting into the object there, cutting into the orange. Sculpting the shadow a little bit, blending the shadow out, softening it. So it's these real subtle details, these real fine things that make it look realistic. Also, I want to point out that the way I'm, you can see how I'm holding my brush really far back and sometimes my brush is pointing straight at the canvas and sometimes, like right now, it's actually <laughs> right next to it. Um, it's kind of parallel to the canvas instead of being perpendicular to the canvas. And that allows me to get more paint onto the surface. So you have to understand and, and just play around with these different ways of holding the brush and different ways of applying paint and different techniques and you'll start to understand how the materials work and uh, how the paint reacts to certain things. So once again just trying to add more paint on there, get the light to really hit there. So once again, just mixing up some color. I still have a little bit of canvas that I haven't painted yet to off to the right. Uh, I'll probably get that in just a few minutes here. Just blending out the edge a little bit more, making sure that it's that it reads straight across. I hope this commentary has been a little helpful for you. If you have any questions, just please post them down below in the comment section and I'll do my best to get back to you when I can. And uh, If you have a really good question, I'll make a video um, doing a demo or addressing that question. Um, just depends on the question, so don't be afraid to ask. And there we go. Filling in the canvas there once again. Now the whole canvas is actually filled with pigment, with color. And I want to definitely encourage you to set up your own still life like this. Um, it can be even simpler than this. It could just be an orange um, with some leaves or, an or or just an orange by itself. Um, and just set up like a white sheet with a w completely white background, completely white foreground. Put a light on it with a little lamp and uh, see what you can do. Or you could use a black sheet or any color sheet you want. I mean, just get creative. So right there on the object, I was putting some uh, reflected lights that are the sheet is now reflecting up onto the, the copper shiny object. So I had to put those little white lines on there. And you'll see more of that toward the end here. I'm going to be working basically on that copper object. That's what's going to need mo most of my attention. to really finish up the painting and uh, get it to the point that it needs to be at. So right now I'm still working with the foreground, just adding more lights and things and areas. And I think eventually uh, I'm going to add some more shadows 
uh, in that in that foreground sheet because the light just isn't coming across uh, as bright as it should be. Um, and the reason I found out the reason for that when I really looked at it um, was I was I was lacking some darker shadows that needed to be in there. As you can see right here, I'm adding in just a, another little darker value that needed to be in the sheet um, in order for those lights to really pop out the way that they the way that they are, the way that they were. So sometimes if you just focus on the light, uh, you're going to miss uh, you know the most obvious thing is actually you need to darken the shadows and then the light will just come out um, comparatively. So you got to be sure you're focusing on light and shadow and just working that back and forth. So there I am now, finally touching up that little clementine, softening up the edge, blending in a little more, even using the finger there, finger painting, you know what I mean? I probably use my finger more than I should to blend things, but it works. So. Working on the other clementine now, or Adding in some uh, highlights and reflected lights. There we go, using the middle finger again to blend. Now I'm working the shape a little bit more. So now you can see I'm being a lot more careful now than I was at the very beginning. So as the painting goes on, you have to be more careful and um, focus a lot more on the details. Um, and it, it depends on personal preference on how detailed you want to be. For me, I don't like being super detailed. Uh, but sometimes it does happen, I get carried away and I, I just start painting more details than I wanted to and I, I kill a lot of the brush strokes that I should have left there. But, um, you know, it just takes a lot of practice. But, so yeah, the, as, as the painting goes on, you start focusing on smaller and smaller areas and you get more and more detailed. You know, and at the beginning of the painting, I, I was just really focusing on, on the larger shapes. And now I'm just focusing on the smaller and smaller shapes. Um, still, still working the whole shape, but now I'm just focusing on smaller areas of color. Uh, And I, I tend to be jumping around a little bit as well. I was working on the Asian pear and then I jumped, I saw that color right in the, the copper object. So I jumped over to that and started painting on that. So sometimes it helps to just jump around and if you, if you spot something wrong, you just start working on it and then, you know, do the best you can on it and then jump to something else. Blending out that shadow a little bit more. Now it's starting to look a little more realistic.
So now I'm trying to get like the shadow tones in there and getting like the darks, the really dark accents and things. Trying to figure out how I'm going to paint this copper object and get it to come across realistically. Uh, it's quite a challenge because there's so many little things going on in it, but I'm trying to just focus on the main, you know, the main aspects of it. The light, the shadow, and then kind of like the average color of it. You know, small reflected lights, reflected shadows. All right, so mixing up some more color, probably cleaning my brushes off and um, just assessing things. Now I'm jumping back into more of the light colors. So I kind of, I jump around from shadows and then I go into the lights then I go back into the shadows. Um, it's just a battle between lights and shadows and, um, you know, these different values and different colors. So now looking at this object, you can see how much variation is actually in that now. From me putting all these little dots of color and little notes of color, all the variation involved in that object to make it look realistic. If you look at the very beginning, at the if you remember at the very beginning what it looked like, it didn't have this much variation. So really kind of that reality of it is, is getting that degree of variation and... Um, all those different little, little tiny color shifts. So now I'm, I'm trying to get kind of the texture in there, uh, all these little indentations and uh, dots of light and things, but I know what's really going to bring it to life are the highlights on this object. That's what's really going to make it pop. So I, I kind of wait to add those to the very end, as you can see. Um, but once I start adding those in, you'll see it just start to come to life. But for now, I'm just focusing on kind of the uh, the red tones and the yellow tones involved. And by yellow, I kind of mean like a goldish brown there. There's no uh, pure yellow involved in, in this on this object. It's all in the mixtures. So here's a lot of that, that highlight, some white paint. Not, it's more of the sheet color highlight. It's not completely white. But it's going to look a lot brighter because it's surrounded by a lot more darkness than the white sheet. Uh, and then a little dot on the handle there. I think I'm going to blend that out and soften it. You'll see in a minute here how I get kind of a little shine. Uh, on the highlight. So I'm kind of warming that up a little bit. It's more of a yellowy, it's not completely white, it's more of a yellow uh, highlight. And see I soften that edge there and then I go back in and add a really bright highlight. It's giving this sort of shine look because uh, when you look at bright highlights like that um, and you squint down, you get kind of this, it's kind of a hazy look. It's hard to explain, but you, you've probably seen it before. Uh, when you look at something really bright, you kind of get like a halo. And uh, that's just what I was trying to accomplish there. I think it came out pretty well. So 
you know, I'm working with a smaller brush now, just trying to get in some of the, the little bit more of details, lighter areas, I'm just trying to uh, push it to the next level, get it to come across realistic. So, so many little things going on, so many different little reflected lights and uh, shadow areas and there's one little light spot there and another one here and just a lot going on so I'm trying to simplify that but still keep it uh, realistic So now I'm transitioning to another, using a different uh, color, probably, you know, cleaning the brush off. Probably taking a step back, assessing things. Uh, where do I need to go to next? So now I'm going with the background again, the background color. And uh, actually it's a little bit lighter than the background. And what this is doing is creating a little bit of a halo effect. So I lightened up the background just slightly. And I'm adding that right above, it's probably like 1 16th above the object, blending it out a little bit. And that just creates kind of a halo effect. It, it makes the highlights just look a little bit brighter. It's a, it's a very subtle thing. And it was something I was experimenting with, and I think it came out. Uh, quite nicely. But that's another point to touch on uh, since we're talking about that is just experiment with your paintings. Uh, do one of these a day for a week or two weeks and just experiment with each one and see what's going to happen. Sometimes they're not going to come out good at all. So now I'm adding a small stem on that Asian pear and that just brings it to life. Uh, and then a small highlight right on the end of it. And that uh, it really bring, brings it to life for the most part. So it, it's these small little details that can bring something to life, but um, if you get the rest of the painting wrong, they might not help that much. Uh, You know, the painting would have been just fine without that stem, but for me, uh, it just added a little bit more to it. Adding some little green stems on the, on the uh, oranges there, or clementines. Now I'm fixing up the Asian pear uh, for the last time, fixing the shape, and also uh, changing the value just a little bit, brightening it up a little bit, blending it out. Trying to get that nice smooth transition that I'm looking for. A little bit of reflected light there from the sheet. And look at that Asian pear, look at the beautiful colors involved in that. At the very top there's this light brown as it goes down, the orange is kind of reflecting onto the pear, so it's creating this redder, deeper redder tone. And then as it gets to the bottom, where the sheet's reflecting, it gets warmer, more golden. I mean, it's just so many beautiful colors in there. It's so subtle. But uh, those, those changes are, are what 
you want to be looking for just those subtle color shifts subtle value shifts and uh, you can create beautiful uh, objects I mean beautiful paintings so that's just what I look look at in my work and look for just these small little shifts of value and um, you know I'm not going for hyper realism here obviously but um, creating a realistic painting but also having a lot of brush strokes in it and you know just having a little bit of everything involved it's, it's just ha having fun with it basically that's what it comes down to just having fun and there's my arm I'm putting some more white paint out I ran out of white paint so just adding that onto the palette again so I can uh, probably do a little bit more highlights I'm gonna assume still working that copper object it looks a little bit lopsided and I think I realized that the, the drawing of it's a little bit off so I'm gonna have to fix that up um, right at the end so now I'm adding uh, trying to lighten up the sheet even more just push it just a little bit more these are, these are the brightest highlights. So that's why I left them to the very end. That's what I was talking about earlier, leaving the brightest to the last, and that's what's going to bring it to life. There I go, messing with the foreground again, of course. Or messing with the sheet. So here's where I'm fixing up the edge of this object, going back in with that gray color, and you know it's it's sticking out just a little too much on the left side. So there I'm kind of carving it out and uh, making it look like it's supposed to look. So sometimes you get really far in a painting and you notice that the drawing's off just a little bit and you have to sacrifice, you have to be willing to sacrifice the entire object. Uh, you know, it's, it's just paint when it comes down to it. It's just a painting. You can always paint it again or recreate it. Um, so I had to just sacrifice a little portion of it there and uh, take a chance of messing up the background, messing up the foreground, messing up the, the object. Um, but just realizing that it's just color, I can always uh, repaint this. So there we go, using my fingers again to just soften an edge. You know, you don't have to use your finger. You can actually use like a really softer kind of like a, a sable brush. Um, I just didn't have any laying around and I uh, didn't even really think about it. And like I've said, I've been using the same brush the entire painting. Um, so I just use my finger sometimes to soften things. And there I, I fix it up a little bit with the brush. 
you know, that's also a fun challenge to do is just pick like a medium sized brush and try to just do the entire painting with that one brush. Um, of course, I did use a smaller liner brush for the uh, little highlights and things, but other than that, I've used the same brush the entire painting. It really helps you uh, master your brushes and your tools to just try to create an entire painting with that one brush and you, you'll really get you, you really understand how it's how brushes start to to work for you and uh, you know you just have a greater understanding of your materials so now adding in some of the darker darks back in again on the object so this was not like an easy object to paint it was it's it's pretty tough but I mean I had to just keep pushing it back and forth back and forth and, and uh, you know getting it as close to what I was seeing eventually I'll add in the lights which will be um, the reflections from the white sheet those will be in the bottom so I'll be adding those in eventually and that will kind of bring it home here within the next uh, few minutes basically there we go. overworking uh, the top part again messing things up <laughs> instead of just leaving it alone now I gotta go back and fix up the highlight again. Like I said, sometimes I get a little bit too detailed, um, which can be a bad thing, but it, like I said, it's personal preference for everyone, for every artist out there. Uh, it depends on how detailed you want to get with your work. You know, I, I can't tell you what's right or wrong, and no, nobody can tell you what's right or wrong. Um, so a very subtle highlight there. See, I put it down and then I can blend it out, take it off with my finger, and uh, the object just starts to look like it's glowing, basically. Or at least the highlight is kind of glowing. It gives that sense of that it's really bright. So you can see like the last 20 minutes or so, maybe 15, I've been working on this object. So this is really the, uh, this is either going to make or break the painting basically in, in my eyes when I was painting this. Because the other objects, yeah those are easy to paint, they look okay, you know what they are. But with this picture I really had to get the texture down, I had to get all these highlights in there. I really had to, to make it shine as kind of the focal point of the, the painting basically um, because it's, it's the only man-made thing in the painting. The other things are all natural, they're fruit. Um, we kind of know uh, what those look like and with this picture I had to uh, I just had to bring out the the realness of the, of the object basically. So now I'm, I'm adding in some lighter yellows and things here. This is what, where this painting, where the object starts coming to life. Like I said, when you save those those lights for the last uh, part, that's when it starts coming together. <clears throat> and I may eventually have to go back in with some darker darks once again. Uh, it's just battling the lights and darks, but usually at the very end of those lightest lights or the darkest darks that are going to um, really bring out the, the, the life of the object. So like I said, there's the darks again. Like I said, there's a lot going on with this object. There's, there's darks here, lights there, darks there. So you have to be just really mindful. Of, of what I'm doing, where I'm putting things, because there's so many reflections going on, and, and 
things going on. So really it's kind of light against dark and dark against light. You can see that right at the bottom of the object there's a transition from, if you look from the uh, on the left side of it, it's light with dark above it, and then as it gets to the middle, it's light with dark beneath it, and then it's light on the bottom again. So it, that, that was a really difficult transition to try to, to paint, and uh, I think it came across pretty nicely. So now I'm just painting on my signature, which is basically just my initials. Uh, you know, signatures are a personal thing. I, I used to do my whole name. I used to do my first initial and last name. And it just, I just have a, a name that's too long. So for these smaller paintings, I just started painting my three initials, um, which is B-A-S. Uh, I could just write B-S on it, but, you know, I get some laughs if I do that. So I just put the th my three initials. Very simple, pretty easy, and that's the finished painting. And you'll see a close up here in just a second. And a look at my palette uh, after I mixed up all the colors. So there's the real colors of the painting and the brilliance of them. You can see the, the shine on that object just really came out. Losing that the left edge on that object really helped. So there you can see just a lot of how much I mixed up different mixtures and um, all the browns and oranges look very similar but they're different obviously when you look at the painting they're different so it's those subtle things you have to realize anyway hope this lesson helped you take care of yourself peace